Good day everyone, I am the drug classification carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and I am here today to talk about my autobiography, the drug classification name. On mine is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, my degenerate names are acetazolamide, methazolamide, dorzolamide, brinzolamide, diclofenamide, ethoxolamide, and zonizamide. As a therapeutic drug, I am an anti-glucoma agent, anti-convulsant, diuretic, altitude sickness agent. As a pharmacologic drug, I am a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. My pregnancy risk category is pregnancy risk category C. Mechanism of action. Carbonic anhydrase in the lumen of the proximal renal tubule converts carbonic acid to water and carbon dioxide. Water and carbon dioxide enter the intracellular space through diffusion. Intracellular carbonic anhydrase enzymes convert water and carbon dioxide back to carbonic acid, which dissolves into hydrogen and bicarbonate. By inhibiting the enzyme, Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drugs result in inhibition of the resorption of bicarbonate by the tubular cells, leading to the accumulation of bicarbonate in the tubular lumen. The resulting result is alkalization of urine as there is more bicarbonate in the urine and the blood becomes more acidic due to the excretion of bicarbonate. The diuretic effect induces an increase in water excretion and decrease in blood pressure. The resulting changes in acid-base balance makes carbonic anhydrase inhibitors useful in treating altitude sickness by counteracting respiratory alkalosis due to hyperventilation. In the eyes, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors reduce the production of aqueous humor by epithelium of the cellular body. By decreasing the production of bicarbonate ions and possibly reducing the flow of fluids, reducing aqueous humor development decreases intraocular pressure, making these medications favorable in patients with glaucoma. Pharmacokinetics absorption. I am well absorbed from the GI tract after oral administration distribution i am distributed throughout body tissues in metabolism i have none excretion i am excreted primarily in urine via tubular secretion and passive reabsorption indications fda approved indications elevated intraocular pressure angle closure and open angle glaucoma Pseudotumor cerebri, edema due to congestive heart failure, centricephalic epilepsies, altitude sickness, prophylaxis. Examples of non FDA approved indications sleep apnea, cerebrospinal fluid leak, reversal of metabolic alkalosis in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, prevention of contrast induced nephropathy. Contraindications. I should not be given to patients with hepatic diseases such as cirrhosis or impaired hepatic function. Patients with hypersensitivity to sulfonamides should use CIIs with caution due to the risk of fatal anaphylactic shock. Any patient with a history of a serious drug-induced rash should avoid this class of medications. I may cause electrolyte imbalances and therefore I am not recommended in patients with hypokalemia, hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis, hyperchloremic acidosis, adrenal insufficiency, or marked renal impairment. Side and adverse effects, changes in taste, fatigue, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, tinnitus, paresthesia, headache, sulfonamide. Structure can cause allergic reactions such as rash, anaphylaxis and rare cases, Stevens-Johnson syndrome or SJS 
or toxic epidermal necrolysis or TEN or TEN. Adverse effects of topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors include burning, superficial punctate keratopathy, local inflammatory reactions of the conjunctiva. Nursing responsibilities before I am given, the nurse should establish baseline weight before initial therapy and weigh daily thereafter when used to treat edema. Lab tests such as blood pH, blood gases, urinalysis, CBC, and serum electrolytes should be considered. During the time I am given, the nurse should monitor for signs and symptoms of mild to severe metabolic acidosis, potassium loss, which is greatest early in therapy. Monitor input and output, especially when used with other diuretics. After I am given, the nurse should educate the patient and family in maintaining adequate fluid intake to reduce risk of kidney stones to report any of the following numbness, tingling, burning, drowsiness, and visual problems, sore throat or sore mouth, unusual bleeding, fever, skin, and renal problems. To eat potassium-rich diet and take potassium supplement when taking this drug in high doses or for prolonged periods. Do not breastfeed while taking this drug without consulting physician. Thank you for listening and I hope you all have a good, good, good day.